Hey, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Jay the Comedian. Good morning. How are y'all doing today? I want to talk to y'all today about two times I had a run in with the elders. and I think it was kind of funny, so I'm going to share it with y'all. So one time, right, uh, I was dating this girl. She was not a Jehovah Witness, and I was living with her, and we broke up. When we broke up, I moved in with my sister until I got my own place. But before I got my own place, um, my sister was like, you know, maybe you should come back to the meetings because, you know, she's a Jehovah Witness or whatever. And I, I, I was thinking about it because after the, the way my old relationship ended, I was in a vulnerable space. And that's usually when Jehovah Witnesses get you, when you're in that vulnerable space. And I was in that. So, um, and like I said, I was born into the religion. So she was like, you know, just come back to the hall, come back to the kingdom hall. And um, I wasn't doing no research or nothing like that. So I'm like, you know, maybe I will give it another try. So she had these elders from her kingdom hall come to give me a shepherding call. Now, this elder was obviously an insane person, an insane human being. Why would I say that? Okay, the year is 2009, 2008, 2009. And this brother had an Afro with a self-made like part, like he, he, he made it himself. He took his time to make this part in his Afro in the front and in the back, he had it slicked down. This is an obviously insane person we're dealing with. If you saw him, you'd say, yep, that's an insane man right there. He had, <laughs> cause it was like an Afro with like, with white hair. It was just crazy. It was a great Afro cause the brother's a little older. And, um, you know, so he came over to give me the shepherding call. And he was, during the shepherding call, he started telling me about, you know, when he was a Marine and how many people he murdered and how he had to kill some people with just a knife in the forest. Now, mind you, he was doing the shepherding call on me. And for some reason, the shepherding call ended up talking about his days as a Marine and how he murdered all these people. I didn't ask, but that's where we're at. I'm like, oh, wow, so you're... A murderer. Okay. Um, you did it for the country. I get that. Um, you don't believe in the army and stuff no more. I can see why. But uh, at the same time, you're an insane person. Why are you even telling me these stories? And they, you know, they start asking, so, you know, what was you doing? How was you doing? You know, I was like, oh, you know, living my life. Like, were you doing anything appropriate? No, I've been out of the, I haven't been going to the meeting in a couple years and I've done nothing wrong. Amazing, right? <laughs> of course, I'm not going to tell this idiot. The day, first day I talked to him. They're like, well, okay, so this is what we should do. You know, just come back to the meeting. We'll have a judicial committee. And, you know, you may have get, need to get this fellowship or whatever. But it's just a part of getting clean and coming back to the organization. I said, oh, okay, yeah. Never went back. You idiot. Why would you even tell me I, was, I could possibly get this fellowship? And I, I should have known that going in. But why would you tell me that? When he told me that, I'm like, yeah, of course. No, not going back. Sorry. That was your last opportunity to get me back. That's when I really started doing research. And I didn't even move to my own place. I moved into the uh, to a place uh, with, with, with my current wife, Boom. And um, and we, we started our relationship. Now that's one story. This is another story about the uh, this elder at my kingdom hall, at my kingdom hall. Now, apparently, um, as you all know, I lived a hell of a double life, right? And I dated a lot, like a lot of sisters, a lot of different sisters I dated. And um, I didn't know, but some of the sisters, you know, they wouldn't, they want to trick on themselves, so they wouldn't, you know, tell them what we were doing. But a lot of the sisters were going back to my elders when I break up with them, like, no, you know, he broke up with me, he broke up with me, he broke up with me, right? So this elder at my hall tried to flex on me, tried to flex on me. Now, understand. I had respect for the elders, but I didn't have respect for anybody that tried to strong arm. I don't know. I've always been the type where if you tell me what to do, I will always try and do the opposite just because I don't like authority. You know what I'm saying? I don't enjoy people telling me what to do. That's why I knew the Jehovah Witness religion wasn't going to work out for me because it just wasn't in me. And this brother told me, he said, look here, the next person you date, you better marry. He told me that face to face. And my response was, oh, no. <laughs> you know? 
And he was just like, uh, what do you mean, no? I'm like, no. You got to show me in a scripture where it says, I need to date. I need to marry the next person I date. <laughs> or there's a certain number of people who I can and cannot date. Let me know that. Show me that scripture, brother. Because I know that ain't in there. And you're not going to flex on me like, bro, you're literally like five years older than me. And I know I can beat you in a fight. So stop. Like, I was already, like, having hella questions about being a Jehovah Witness. And I was already kind of like, uh, this is kind of dumb. What am I doing? You know what I'm saying? So for him to come and try to flex on me, huh, the next sister you date, you better marry. No. I brought several more sisters <laughs> to the hall. And he was pissed off every time he looked at me. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know for a fact. Every sister that I dated before he said that and after he was in their ear saying little stuff to him. Hey, you need to watch out for that brother. Watch out for that brother. Like they was doing stuff like that behind my back and I didn't even know, you know? I wasn't doing no I wasn't doing people that bogus and dirty, you know what I'm saying? I didn't get dumped that much, but I mean, I wasn't doing nobody dirty, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't a dirty, horrible bad guy, you know? Um but yeah, I found out that the elders at my hall was going around telling people if they thought I was talking to somebody, like it was a couple people who I was genuinely just friends with, that they would go to their elders and tell them like, hey, you know, watch out for this brother, watch out for him, watch. I'm like, yo, I wish I would do that with the pedophiles. I wish I would have knew then what I know now. I'm like, yo, y'all need to keep that same energy when it came to all them pedophiles that was up in there. Why y'all ain't do that? Why y'all ain't go around telling them about the possible dangers? I never heard any dangers about anybody. You know what I'm saying? Ever. Unless it was like some straight gossip and you don't know whether or not it was true or not or somebody just disliked somebody. But, yeah, man, like these elders was tripping. And that one elder in particular tried to flex on me. Brother. <laughs> You, I can fight better than you. I know that. I know it. And you're not going to go there. So your flex attempt isn't going to work. You know how many judicial committees I've been in? I'm not scared of your judicial committee, bro. Especially when I know you don't have any evidence. And that's what I knew by then. Unless a judicial committee has evidence. Nothing they can do. But talk to you. What evidence you got, brother? None? Oh, okay. Well, um, deuces. Bye. <laughs> Anyway, man, yeah, that's just some craziness that happened in my life. I got so many stories, so many stories, and I'm going to keep telling them to you. Anyway, it's your boy, Jaden Comedian. I hope y'all have a great day. Holla at your guala deuces.